So if you look at the squares on the periodic table, there's some information that we can get from them. The periodic table displays the symbols and sometimes names of the elements, along with other information about the structure of their atoms. So let's look at a typical periodic table square here. So the first thing we see here in the middle is a symbol. So the symbol is either going to be one letter or two. The first letter is always capitalized. The second letter is always lowercase. We have a number in our lower left hand corner, which is our atomic number. It's the bigger, bolder number. We have the atomic mass up above. It's always bigger than the atomic number because remember the atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And it's the average of all the known isotopes of that element, which is why it's not a whole number. On the bottom left hand corner we have the electron configuration. We talked about that in chapter 5. This would be very valuable in knowing how many electrons are in which shells of the atom and how many valence electrons it has. And in the upper right hand corner we have the selected oxidation states. And we'll be talking about them a little bit later in the year. So how do you find the name of an element if you just were looking at the periodic table and you had a square such as this? So each element has an atomic number that's specific to that element. So our atomic number is 6. So if you didn't know that C is carbon, you could look at the atomic number 6, go to your table S, scan down till you find the atomic number 6, and read over, and of course C is carbon. Some of these you're going to memorize over the course of the year. Some of these you aren't. So you should always know how to use this method to look up the names of any element that you don't know. So there, we can label it carbon if you want. Some periodic tables are labeled. Yours, yours, and your reference table is not labeled. So you either need to know them or know how to find them using table S. You should also know the states of matter of the elements on the periodic table. So some periodic tables, like the one on our wall in the classroom, are color-coded. and they, The colors tell you the state of matter at standard temperature, which would be zero degrees Celsius. Um, we have black which is uh, a solid state of matter we have red which indicates the gases and blue which indicates the liquids so the red ones are hydrogen and helium those are of course gases but also nitrogen oxygen fluorine and chlorine hopefully you know those are gases and all of group 18 group 18's name is the noble gases so if you can remember that you'll know they're all gases now the liquids are that you should know are number 80, that's mercury, number 35, that's bromine, and then we have a couple others, 31 gallium and 55 cesium and 87 francium. Those are kind of liquids, so at standard temperature they are not liquids. At, at room temperature um, they probably would be, or slightly above room temperature. We'll talk more about these in class. But the only ones that you know for sure are liquids on a region's exam question at standard temperature are mercury and bromine. Most of them are, are solids, and I expect you to just memorize the gases, all of 18, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine, and of course hydrogen. So in summary here, the squares on the periodic table contain important information about each element. You should know what the, that information is and be able to answer questions based on it. The atomic number is what you use to identify an element. If you don't know its name, you go to table S, look up that atomic number, and read over for its name. You're also expected to know the states of matter of all the elements on the table. This isn't on your reference table. Your reference table will not be color-coded, but it's not too hard to memorize the, the two liquids that you may be asked about and the several gases. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know.